awful lot, but I'm ready. <laughs> Just talk to me, you're fine. Hi. Uh, oh, you're, hi, how are you? Good, what's your name? <laughs> My name is Art Frank, and I am the grandfather of Stuart Hamilton Frank. Definitely true. <laughs> and what year were you born? 1919. Mm -hmm. And, uh, which makes me presently 97 years old. And when you were young, what's the first piece of technology that you remember? A crystal set. A crystal radio set. Oh. And in those days, radios had no tubes, no batteries. They had nothing but a little tiny capsule of crystal, which was sufficient to take in a radio signal if the antenna was perhaps at least 30, 30 feet. And the antenna sometimes came in the form of a, of a metal metallicized plate, gold, which I strung around the inside of my third floor room. And I would have it by my bedside, and it only produced enough power to power a pair of earphones. And uh, I would lie in bed with my earphones, you change stations, by changing the position of the cat's hair wire, which rested on the face of the crystal. And by moving it around, you could get different locations. Don't ask me why. So were you a ham operator? No, I don't think so, no. Because I think of hams as people who talked into their radio equipment. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I did not do that. I just had this simple little crystal set. Neat which was wonderful to have. I was very young. I think I must have been, I'm uh, probably older than I think. I was probably 12, 11, 12 years old, 15. And then, skipping forward considerably, when you joined the Navy, where did they send you to school? They sent me to Cambridge, Massachusetts for six months. And that was at MIT, a special course for people like myself who were entering electronics. And they wanted to find out how much electronics you knew. And they found out I didn't know very much. <laughs> <laughs> but it was enough to get me in the Navy, thanks to the intervention of my father, who told them that he was class of 1913, I think it was, and uh, would be very pleased if I was in the Navy. In the Pacific, I was electronics officer with an airplane group, but it was a group parked out there in the middle, exact middle of the, of the, of the Pacific, almost on the equator, and we were principally just a transient place. Mm. Although the, the uh, fight to obtain those islands, the Gilbert Islands, it was the first ferocious fight in the Pacific and a great deal was learned and a great many lives were lost. I came in with the party which kept a station alive there. I was dealing with electronics on aircraft. Okay. And that would be the radios and the radars primarily. Yeah. Some of the things. All right, so I'm going to ask you about a story that I've sort of heard over the years, that you and a buddy wanted to improve the clothes washing that was going on. Uh, well, I went out to the Pacific with one unit, which was sort of the fighting edge of the unit. And then I was transferred to the main island, I think it was Baruba, and uh, they were the housekeepers. And after a while, life got pretty dull, and the sailors were making things up. Some of my buddy sailors made this washing machine, which consisted of a rain barrel, and they found a way to, to make a big propeller that was at the bottom of the rain barrel, and I'm trying to think, what ran that doggone thing? And uh, I had really no right to it, but when some news guy came along and they wanted to get a picture, they called me out and took a picture of me and my buddy. And uh, 
So we, we, we really wash your kids. A little machine, it got you clothes clean. So they had a, they had an agitating washing machine that would wash the clothes without having to actually turn the, the barrel. Well, the, the, the clothes were in the barrel. Yeah. And I can't remember whether it was a propeller on the bottom or what it was. It, I think I, you used to tell us it was a propeller. It would make sense, but they, but they'd kind of bent. They they you know had to be a sieve or something that kept the clothes from wrapping around the propeller blades. Yeah. And I don't know what how how that worked. Yeah. It's been a while since I took one of those apart. <laughs>
Yeah. And we were taught then how the computer worked, not how to work the computer. We were taught how the computer worked, and then it was up to us to do whatever program building we could. Oh. Now that was going on on an individual basis. Meanwhile, the on the underwriting side of the business, great strides were being made with big computers, but they were not. Not in those early years, they were not used for underwriting. Wow. Everything was still being done by hand. Yeah. Unbelievable change. Yeah. It's, it's hard to even, yep. even comprehend that. And so I observed the progression of the computer into the insurance for this. It's total revolution. Yeah. By 1955-56, the computers and insurance companies were pretty well installed. Mm -hmm. And that would have all been IBM? Uh, I don't really think you can say all, but you can say 95%, 90%. Yeah, Remington, Hewlett-Packard, those. Pe people were learning things, but the main machine was IBM. Yeah. So taking a huge jump forward, you are the first person I remember who owned his own computer, who had a home computer in the house. I knew no one else who had a home computer. Do you remember that first computer? Oh, very well. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> it was an Apple I, not an Apple II, which came along shortly thereafter. And uh, it absolutely fascinated me from the moment I heard about it. I and just, and uh, so you just decided to go out and buy one? So I just went out and bought one. Did you know what you were going to do with it? I had a notion I would use it in the investment work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did. I primarily used it for learning, I think. I would write letters on it, things of that nature. But mostly I was learning something about setting up, setting up uh, screens of information. I hadn't gotten into charting, it wasn't available at that time. Uh, it had the rudiments of things. Had enough things. Yeah. And uh, I know it kept me busy night after night. Yeah. Playing with it, learning about it. And then, have you had a computer ever since? Oh, yes. I think this is, this is my fourth or fifth one. And what was it like when suddenly the computer wasn't just in your home, but you could connect with other people online? Well, it was wonderful. It was wonderful, and I would keep in touch with family members particularly, and do a limited amount of business contact with Brokerage House, mm -hmm. getting information. But that was pretty limited, because there weren't, not, there weren't enough sources at that time the capacity was there to deliver the message, but the message wasn't there. Yeah. But it was obviously coming on extremely fast. I think the thing that surprises me the most is the way that you and others can take a little handheld computer and look up and find information about almost anything I can think of. <laughs> it's there. It's, it's this tremendous opening up of information. The problem remains, what does an individual do with that information? Is it simply a curiosity or does it change your thought process, yeah. expand your thought process? A, a common fallacy among people is because they can name it, they think they understand it. And uh, the computer opens new doors to things that you can name, but you you may even be able to manipulate them for your purposes, but you don't really understand them. And that process is, uh, seems to be a never-ending process. We just get led further and further into the, the why of things which enables the utility of things. If, if all you're looking for is, is an answer, then the computer's got a, a real negative side because answers depend upon the question. 
the quality of the question. You can get answers to meaningless questions that doesn't take you anywhere. So uh, I think we're just entering the stage of the computer with this newest generation where the utility will be, they will be so accustomed to it that they'll be opening up new understandings. That's going to be the really exciting part. And I rather suspect that those understandings will be in the nature of social understandings. What do people prize? Why do they prize it? How do they share it? And you can do things with the computer in those directions that you just simply couldn't do before. But you can, uh, you can challenge people and offer inquiry and you can find resources. Which made me 60. Yeah, I was an old man, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> You were a spring chicken, and we both know it. Yeah, yeah. As someone who got one of the first computers and has had a computer, a home computer in their home, basically since they were available, how do you feel about people of your generation who reject it, they don't want to learn it, they want nothing to do with it? Well, I can understand where they come from, but I totally disagree with it. I mean, it's the same as a hammer, isn't it? Some people didn't want to have anything to do with that hammer. <laughs> so the guy who decided he didn't want to use the wheel just ended up having to do a lot more work. He ended up doing a lot more work or going without a wheel. He just didn't have it. But uh, this thing is just one more step forward in expanding capability to perceive and to conceive. Mm -hmm. But you do recognize that among your peers, you are rather singular in your acceptance and adoption of that technology. No, no. My peers, mostly good. Uh, no. I felt rather inferior to many of my peers in this area. I was, uh, I was doing more routine things with the computer than I would have liked to have been doing. I have to be careful how I say that. The emphasis there is on the computer, because I was doing things where I, I did like the horizons. They were wide open. I could do a lot of exploration. But I couldn't apply the computer to that area of exploration. Uh, I could benefit from what other people had done. The big question in investment work is, are you contributing anything or are you just following somebody else's trail? 99% of us, 99% of the time, are following somebody else's trail, hoping we're getting a little angle. But there are things to be learned. The computer can help us learn. Anything else you want to add? It's been a pleasure. <laughs> you ask good questions. Thank you. I wish I could give you better answers. I thought they were fabulous answers. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would have stopped filming a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs>